Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. My name is Jennifer and you can find me on Ravelry as Alindria or on Instagram as Alindria Knits. And today I'm going to show you how to do duplicate stitch and give you a few tips. So why would you do duplicate stitch in the first place? Well, for example, on this pattern I decided I wanted the larger hearts to be outlined in a third color and I didn't want to carry that color all the way around when I was stranding. So an easy and honestly fairly quick way to do that is doing duplicate stitch. Another reason you can use duplicate stitch is say you did your color work but you accidentally messed up and did a couple stitches in the wrong color. You can come back at the end and then just use the correct color and go over that and correct it and you don't have to worry about frogging or ripping back or having the pattern messed up. Or you could also use it to just fill in an area. Like say I wanted to uh, change the color of this heart right here or fill in the little section in the inside of this heart. You could use duplicate stitch to do that. Let's get started. So when you're doing duplicate stitch, you have to um, cut a length of yarn. You want it long enough so you don't have to cut too many pieces of yarn. It depends on how much duplicate stitch you need to do, but the longest I will make a thread is maybe two, two and a half feet because you don't want to get all tangled up while you're trying to pull everything through. So, and then you'll just need a tapestry needle and you thread that yarn and then you're ready to go. Now, when I'm doing duplicate stitch, what I like to do is, well, first of all, I like to do it before I complete the sock. It depends on where the duplicate stitch is on the sock. Um, so I've knit the leg and the next part is doing the heel. I find it's easier to do the duplicate stitch while I'm still able to stick my fingers inside and kind of um, stabilize it from the inside rather than having to stick my hand all the way inside a finished sock. So for this, um, for this part, I knit this next band of the pattern so that I'd have something to hang on to. So for the big heart, I'm just going to be doing a duplicate stitch around that outside edge. And if I hadn't had a few rows to hang on to, then it would have been very awkward if I only had like this single row of the light color. So you want enough to hang on to, but you don't necessarily want to wait until the end of the sock. You can, it's, you can still do it. It's not impossible. I just find it's a little easier this way. So my next tip is hold the sock, at least at the beginning, in the direction that it's being knit. And uh, figure out where you want to start. So you want to start at the bottom and work your way up. You don't have to, but I find that's what looks the best. So since I'm doing an outline, I will start here at the bottom, I'll go across here, then I'll come up the side, and then I'll go across here, and then up, and then over this way. Now, when I get to here, I will cut the yarn if I haven't run out already, because then I'm gonna cut another shorter length and then work up this column. You do not have to do that, but I find for me, my duplicate stitch looks slightly better when I work up a column rather than when I work down a column. If you don't want to mess with that, if you don't want to fuss and cut another piece of yarn and have more ends to deal with, you can definitely go down the column. <laughs> no one's stopping you, it's your knitting. And you might as well try it. Maybe you like the look of that better. I'm always a big proponent of trying different ways and seeing which way works best for you. But if you're unsure, my recommendation is to work up a column rather than down a column. Now that you have your yarn, uh, when you work a duplicate stitch, what you want to do is you want to come up underneath at the bottom of the stitch. So at the bottom of a V. And then, depending on which direction you're going, so let's say on this row, 
I'm going to be going right to left. So if I'm going right to left across a row, for each stitch I want to work the right leg before the left leg. So because the point in duplicate stitch is to follow the path of the yarn that's underneath. So when your knit stitches are making a little wave pattern kind of like this. So you want your duplicate stitch to follow that wave pattern. And then if you're working a row, like when I get to the top here and I work the row left to right, you would work the left leg before the right leg all across. So you're making a little wave pattern that goes like this. And one other thing, since I'm doing an outline, I do want to go around the edge with my duplicate stitch. And you don't want to cross back and forth. So if I were to go here, and then I duplicate stitch this one, and then skip over here and do this one, and then do this one, and then skip over here and do this one, and this one and skip over to here and do this one, what you're doing, then you would be creating a lot of floats on the back. And you don't want to do that because that is just going to, if you're creating a bunch of floats on the back by skipping large spaces of stitches, you know, if it's only a couple stitches, sure, go ahead and skip it. But something like this, you don't want to skip and do one here and one here and one here and one here because those floats are just going to make whatever it is tighter and you could actually, you could accidentally pull it too tight. So, uh, yeah, don't do that when you're doing an outline. Now, if you're filling in, like let's say um, I want to come in here and fill in this heart and make it a different color. Then you are. You're going to start at the bottom and you're going to work back and forth in rows, right? Using, you're going to go right to left to right, duplicate stitching in every stitch. And this is okay because you're not creating any floats when you do like when you go like this. You're just following the path of that yarn for each row. One thing that you can do, you can, if you want, you can turn this inside out and pre-weave in your first end to anchor it before you start stitching. However, I'm not going to recommend that right now, just in case you want to pick out your duplicate stitch, like say you want to change the color or you did a duplicate stitch in the wrong spot. It'll be easier to pick out if your ends are not already woven in first. And it is fairly easy to pick out. Um, you just use the tip of your tapestry needle and then pull up the yarn. It's a little tedious, but not hard. Okay, so to start, I'm gonna go Find the bottom of that stitch. Now, I am working, I'm going to be working right to left on this row. So, and make sure you leave a little bit of a tail, enough to, so that you can weave in later. Now you're going to start following the yarn. So you're gonna go underneath, here and you want to pull it snug enough so that the stitch doesn't look too loose but you don't want to pull it tight enough that it kind of like disappears because the whole point of duplicate stitch is to cover up the color of the stitch beneath. So I just go under both legs of that stitch on the bot on the top, that's the top of the stitch. And then go under, whoops, both legs of that stitch. Now when you're using your tapestry needle here, you shouldn't have any resistance. You should be going in the spaces between the yarn. If you feel some resistance, that means you're piercing a yarn strand. And while it can be okay if you pierce a yarn strand, like it's not gonna necessarily wreck anything. 
like I said before, if you do need to um, pull your duplicate stitch out, you know, pick out your duplicate stitching later, it'll be a lot easier if you're not piercing any yarn strands. And I also think it'll be a little bit easier to make the yarn go where you want it to go. So every time I'm inserting the needle, I'm going into a space and not finding any resistance. Okay, so I'm almost to the end of this row. I've got one more leg of this stitch to cover up. I'm going to go into there. And then I'm going to come up one row. And I'm turning it, hopefully you can see this on camera. I don't hold it like this when I'm actually doing it, but I'm go like this. I find it's easier to hold sideways when I'm doing this. Okay, so now I'm going up the side. And since I am still going in a right to left direction, even though I'm also going up, I'm still going to do Cover up the right leg before I do the left leg. And again, I will be going back down there and going up a row again. And remember, you're always aiming for the bottom of the V when you come up to start a new stitch. Still doing the right leg before the left leg. Now I'm almost to a column to show you how I do that. Just a couple more stitches here. Okay, so now I'm to a column. I'm going to duplicate stitch the first stitch at the bottom of the column. Okay, so here I am. What I need to do now is I need to do the left leg of this stitch. So I'm going to go down in here, but then I, I want to come up right here at the bottom of this stitch. So this is actually a very small movement. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under the horizontal bar of the stitch. So when I mean the horizontal bar, it's essentially the top of the stitch. So you have your V at the bottom and then uh, connecting the top of the V, there's a strand of yarn. So I go into the bottom of this V and I'm coming up after I pass underneath the top part of that white strand of yarn, which lets me come out at the bottom of the stitch directly above the one I just duplicate stitched. Now, when you're going up a column, I don't think it matters if you do the right leg before the left leg or left before the right, as long as you're consistent, because then it'll give it a consistent look. So I'm gonna turn it sideways since that's how I hold it when I'm actually doing it. And I'll just do this little column right here. I'm going into the bottom of this stitch trying to hold this so that you can see what's going on. So I'm making it slightly more difficult for myself. And then again, you're pretty much only going under one strand of yarn there. Now, when I work these stitches and columns, the legs do seem slightly looser than when I'm going the other, when I'm going either left to right or right to left, but I don't care. <laughs> it really doesn't bother me. And I think, especially, you know, these are socks. They're gonna be on your feet. 
you're not going to be looking at them that closely. Just try to keep them, your stitches fairly even. And I think that'll be good enough. Okay, so I have one more stitch in the column to cover up. And when I'm doing this, you can see like sometimes I'm kind of like poking that yarn, using my nail to poke that yarn into place. Sometimes you have to do that in the column. Okay, and now I'm going to be working right to left again. So I'm still doing right leg before left leg. And this is just going to continue. Uh, so I'll be working right to left, and then I'm going up another column on this side, and then I'm going to start be working left to right, so I'm going to start doing the left leg before the right leg. And that's it. Once you start doing duplicate stitch, you'll realize it's actually pretty easy to do. So I hope that's been helpful, and happy stitching! <laughs>